It's Sunday, September 25th, and there's all kinds of comic conversations to be had, so let's start another episode of Comics and Coffee. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to another episode of Comics and Coffee. This is my weekly kind of unedited show where I go over the things that are going to be coming up this week and answer any kind of questions that you guys might have and throw in the comments. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is say thank you so much to everybody that's watching out there, everybody that's part of a, you know my channel so far. Uh, I was hoping to get over 50 subscribers before doing this and you know thank people for that, but now I'm over 60, and I, I just really appreciate the kind of feedback that I'm getting from the content as well as the content that I'm reviewing. So thank you so much. Um, you know the, the next step's 100, and then 1,000, and then then beyond and beyond because what I got. Uh, I've had a couple people reach out to me and they're like, oh my god, you got to do a live show, you know, get people communicating, conversation. It's like, that is that is ultimately one of the things that I want to do the most. I want to be able to, you know, pick three, four, five people, get them together so that, that way we can talk about these things and go into depth regarding the the whole idea of comic books and what comic books mean, what kind of underlying themes they are, and provide really intelligent conversation around the topic. The one thing that I run into right now is that my schedule is pretty erratic. Um, I basically binge record a lot of the different stuff that you guys see here on the channel because that's the only way that I've got time. My normal job, you know, that takes me 50, 60 hours a week, and it can be any, and well, it can be every day, you know. Uh, there are situations where I'd work 14, 15 hour days or work 14, 15 days in a row. It's just, that's part of my job. What we run into is that if I can't deliver a consistent experience for you guys, you know, if I can't say, all right, every Friday night at X day, you know, X time, we're going to have this live show and it's going to be for this period of time. If I can't deliver that kind of consistency on a regular basis, it's just not something that I'm, I'm ready to put out into the world because I want to deliver a very good product for everybody out there that's going to, you know, join me in the future as well as it's joined me already. Uh, I feel like that would be a disservice to you guys. So that's one of the things, and the other thing is that I'm still trying. I'm, I'm still trying to struggling. I'm 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 kind of struggling trying to find the voice of the channel because when I look at this channel, what I want to do is I want to do three things. I want to educate. I want to inform, and I want to promote. So I want to educate people on comic books and the history, and provide you know those kind of that context and those things. And then I want to inform them uh, regarding like stories and depth, and I want to show them how. Um, you know, basically comic books can be vehicles for so many things. You know, they can be, um, you know, metaphors. They can, they can be symbolism for the civil rights struggle. They can be symbolism for various other things. And they provide so much more context and, and it allows people to relate to them in a very, we'll call it tangential way. You know, it's not like I have to be in the midst of this kind of conflict, but you can kind of get those stories. You can get those sides of the story that run parallel to those things. And that's always a great, it's a very powerful part of what comic books were and what comic books are. And then finally, you know, to promote, basically, with all of this comic book culture that's coming out now, you know, these Marvel Cinematic movies, the, the DCU, those kind of things, this is a time where, you know, we can't, we can't really be accepting enough of all the people that want to come into this industry and start to enjoy it. So... One of the things that I want to do is I want to be able to, to promote, uh, you know, acceptance and learning and be a, a gateway, you know, bring people in because the more people that are in the comic book industry, the more people that, you know, read comics and enjoy comics, the more people we can share what we are passionate about, you know, what we love, you know, the, the, the comic books and, and those kind of creations. And I don't want to be the person that's like, nope, you don't know who, you know, appeared in Fantastic Four 52, you know, obviously you didn't do your homework, you are not welcome in the comic book community. That's kind of a, a really terrible approach, and and I, I don't think that there are a lot of people out there, but I want to be, you know, it's like, hey, open arms, come on in, let me help you, let me, let me teach you about these kind of things, let me share something with you that I really enjoy myself. So until I can get that kind of, you know, voice together, until I can kind of get everything on a regular schedule, I think that the live show is just going to be an enhancement to that, and I want to make sure that I do it right. So that's all for, for you guys out there. Um, one of the things that I did want to talk about today is just, basically it's going to put a punctuation mark on the end of that previous statement in the fact that comic book sales are at an all-time high. So according to Diamond, you know, in 
the last 20 years, this is the highest that comic book distribution and sales to comic book shops has been in, in two decades, which is amazing. Probably one of the big things is that we have a, a decent influx of people for the Civil War event, but primarily DC Rebirth has been a phenomenal success. Um, just last month, uh, they released the numbers saying that there was like 16 books that were in the top uh, top they topped 100,000 copies uh, sold to just you know to to comic book shops, and then just list last month, Harley Quinn issue number one just sold like 400,000 copies. It's like 396,000. It's ridiculous how much Harley Quinn sold, and you know possibly that's some of the speculation based on the Suicide Squad. Possibly it's some people that are just connected to the character because of the Suicide Squad trailers and the promotional pieces that came along with that. And they're like, I want to see what this chick's all about, but. What it's what it's doing is it's kind of creating this massive burst in the overall you know production and sales of comic books, and to put that into kind of context, you know it's it's like we're we're traveling along and normally Harley Quinn as a book, you know, say that we were talking about issue twenty or issue twenty five, something along those lines, you know, before it's ended its new fifty two run, still same creative team, you know, Amanda Connor, Jimmy Palmiotti, that is a book. That had regular readership in the sixty to seventy thousand range, so for it to sell four hundred thousand copies, there's a lot of factors that probably go into that book shipping so many units, and you've got to wonder. It's like the measure of success for that book is not necessarily this first issue, but the measure of success is the improvement and the the continued growth over that previous sixty to seventy thousand mi- uh, seventy thousand marker because in reality there's about a hundred hundred and fifty thousand regular comic book readers that you know they go in and they pick up their comic books to read on a weekly basis that's just pretty much where you're at in terms of physical copies digital's completely different i don't have any statistics on that but there's just not that many people out there so if you can take a book like harley quinn from dc rebirth and you're going to say all right we're going to start off at four hundred thousand that four hundred thousand doesn't mean jack to be perfectly honest with you, because the numbers that are going to matter are the numbers in December and January. You know, after the books are no longer returnable, after people have read the second, third, fourth, fifth issue, and they're getting into those kind of things. And with the the new frequency uh, of production and the reduced prices, if DC Rebirth is a success and we're using Harley Quinn as a benchmark, that book needs to be consistently improved by probably 40 to 50 percent, you know, for each particular issue. So you've got to take a readership from from 60,000 to probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 85 to 100,000 on a regular basis um, you know for those issues because they're appearing twice a month. So I'm I'm really excited for where comics are at and I just really want to make sure that we have the kind of sustainability and I ran into that myself. Uh, there's a book that I wanted to read, Kingsway West, and as you probably noticed on the channel, I didn't have a chance to do the review until last night, and that's because they didn't order that book. I did not make it clear enough that I enjoyed it, and I wanted to get the next issue to my comic book shop. And the reason that I was lucky and I did get it was because they have a sister store, and they're like, okay, the, the bulk of the order goes to that one, and then the par- uh, part of the order goes to mine. So he ordered one up the last copy that they had so that that way I could get it and that was awesome but a lot of people don't have that kind of luxury and what I started doing you know this is really <laughs> up to you guys in your comic book shop but I started putting together a list of books that I wanted so that, that way I could like email it to them or send a Facebook message or bring it in so that that way they knew what I was interested in moving forward and what I continued to want to want to get as kind of an extension of my pull list so I know that you see creators rambling on and off about uh, you know pre-ordering books and, and making sure that you know you let your comic book shop know that that's the one that you want. I was guilty of taking that kind of thing for granted that whatever I want to read, you know, whatever's coming out is already going to be there because that's the the job of a comic book shop. And now I'm going to be a bit more proactive, not only because I really enjoy reading a lot of books. Uh, you know, it's because I'm bringing those kind of things to you guys and I want to let you know about as much as possible. So it's, it's going to be a a big benefit for everybody to make sure that everything's always kind of covered in that respect. The last thing before this camera runs out is that I probably need to rename the show because Rob from Comics Explained 
started up his comics and coffee blog. So uh, if you want to hit me up in the comments down below, that'd be great. Any suggestions that are kind of mulling around in your brain for what would be a great show name for, for this instead of comics and coffee, let me know. Uh, as always, if you like what you see, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.